Setting up a Minecraft server on a Linux machine is incredibly simple, and it really only takes like 3 steps. First we need to install Java, then get the Minecraft server.jar file, and then we just run that. So I'm going to be showing you how to do this in the terminal, completely in the terminal, and all the commands should be the same, except for the one command when we install Java, but that's just one command. So I'm assuming most of you guys will be running a Linux distribution that is based off of Debian, so it will use the apt package manager. So we're going to first need to install Java, but first let me SSH into my remote machine. I'm not going to be setting up the Minecraft server on my actual computer, I'm going to be installing it on a Raspberry Pi, which is running Raspberry Pi OS, which is based off of Debian. Now that I'm here, I'm just going to clear up the terminal, and I'll make this full screen too. Make sure you update your repositories by doing sudo apt update. You don't have to do this if you've already done it recently, but this just makes sure you're not downloading anything that's out of date. Then to install Java, what we can do is type sudo apt install default-jdk. This is the command you would use to download Java for running a Minecraft server on Debian based distributions. If you're not using a Debian based distribution, I assume you know what you're doing and you know what a package manager is, so go ahead and install Java for that version of Linux. Now just click enter, and then let it download. Alright, now that it's finished installing, we can get the server.jar file that we need to run the server. But right now, I'm going to make a new directory, which is a folder, and I'll just name it server. So M-K-D-I-R, and then server. Now if you type ls, you can see everything that is in the directory that you're in currently. Right now, I'm just in my home directory, and we know that because you see the squiggly line. And we see the server directory right here. So to go into that, we type cd and then server, and then enter. Now to get the minecraft server.jar file, you can get it from multiple places. I'm going to use paper because you can install plugins, but it's the exact same process. But if you want to get it directly from minecraft, you just search up minecraft server jar, and it'll be the first link. And then you can see download minecraft server.jar, and we're going to right click this and copy link. We're not going to download it onto our main computer. For paper, just go ahead and click downloads then paper, then over here I'm going to right click this and then click copy link and the older builds will be here. Now I'm going to go back to the terminal and then to download this we're going to type wget wget and this will download a file whatever link you put in. I'm just going to paste this here and make sure there's a dot jar at the end so you know you're downloading the right file. Now it's done downloading and we can confirm this by typing ls again and we see that this is here. And I'm going to rename this because this name is not really easy to type. So to do that, we're going to use the move command, but we're not moving this file. All we're doing is renaming it. So I type PAP and then if I click tab, it will auto complete. Then the next thing we're going to put is what we want the new file name to be. I'm going to name it server.jar. This is the move command, but we're not moving it anywhere. We're moving into the same directory with a new name. Then if we type ls again, we'll see it changed to server.jar. Now to run this jar file, there's going to be a command, which I'm going to save an executable so we don't have to type it out each time. This is the amount of RAM that you want to use for the server. The XMX is the most RAM you want to use, and this will be the minimum. So I'm setting it to 2GB for the maximum amount of RAM, and 1GB for the minimum. And you can see how much RAM that your computer has if you type free and then dash H. And it's a little weird if I minimize it a little bit, you can see that I have 7.4 gigabytes available and 6.4 gigabytes are free. So you can look at that and decide how much RAM you want to give it, but you don't really need to use that much RAM for the Minecraft server if you only have like a couple of people playing. If you're going to have a lot of people joining, then you probably need more RAM. What we're going to do is type nano, which is the default text editor for most Linux distributions. And then type start, uh, you can name anything but it has to be a .sh for a shell script. Then click enter, and then I'm just going to right click and paste, or you can do control shift V to paste in a terminal. Then to save this, we click control X, Y, and then enter. Now if we type ls again, we'll see the server.jar file and the start.sh file. And then to give this file executable permissions, we just type chmod plus x, and then the name of the file, which is start.sh. Then click enter, and now we can execute the file just by typing dot slash and then the name of the file. Now just let it set up and then it will stop us to accept some terms. Now it automatically stopped and said fail to load this text file. 
and we just need to edit this file by doing nano and then eula.txt and then we're going to change the false to true then control x y and enter and then we can run it again now it should start generating the world and stuff like that now it says done over here so that means the world is done generating so i'm just going to stop this because this isn't the ideal way to run the server we don't want to have it running in a terminal like this because if we ever kill this terminal then the server just stops. We want to have it running in the background. So after you run the stop command, I'm just going to clear this. And we're going to install an application that's spelled TMUX. It's available on basically every popular Linux distribution. So to install that, I'm going to use sudo apt install TMUX and then enter. I've already installed it so it says this, but if you haven't installed it yet, just click enter and then it will start installing. Now to actually use this, what we're going to do is type tmux and then we create a new session by typing new dash session and then dash t to name it and then I'm just going to name it minecraft. Now we're in a new instance and this instance will never be killed even if you like close the ssh connection. If I was in my home directory and I wanted to get to the server, I could type ls to see what's in this directory and then I'll change to the server directory. And then I can type ls again to see all these files and the start.sh file is here. So now we know that we can run the server from here. I'll type dot slash and then start.sh. And then the server will start up. And even if I kill this terminal and then open it back up again, I'll still be able to access the Minecraft console. And to do that we type tmux catch dash session and then dash t and then the same name we gave. And now you see it didn't kill the session. The Raspberry Pi is kind of slow for the Minecraft server so it takes a long time to start up. I wouldn't really recommend hosting a Minecraft server on a Raspberry Pi especially if you have a lot of people on it but this is just for a demonstration so if you have like another computer that you can host it on that would be much better. If someone on your network is trying to connect to the Minecraft server they would need to use the IP which you can get by doing hostname dash capital I. And it will probably be the first IP address. This is what you'll need to give to the person to connect locally. This is only used for local network traffic only. This will not let people outside of your network connect to the Minecraft server. To do that, we would either need to port forward or use a proxy service like playit.gg. If you don't know what port forwarding is, basically it lets people outside of your network connect to servers that are running inside of your network. Since you only have one public IP address that every device in your network shares, so if someone wanted to connect to a server in your network, your router would not know which device to send it to, so you need to tell the router to just send it to the Minecraft server. And this is only really a risk if you're port forwarding something that's private like a remote desktop service where they would have access to like everything on your computer but this is just a minecraft server so there's not really much harm in port forwarding this so if you need a tutorial for that there's many tutorials for your specific router online so just search up your router and how to port forward port 25565 since that's the default port for minecraft servers unless you changed it and if you aren't able to do that you can always just use playit.gg and you'll have a static domain that you can give to your friends and you would also need to run this in the background with tmux. So that is how you run a Minecraft server on a Linux machine easily. So if this worked for you, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you run into any issues, leave them down in the comments and I'll try to respond as fast as possible. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.